Good afternoon and good morning, good evening, everyone. And welcome to this new webinar uh, from Vidya. So my name is Patrizio Creste and I am from the global marketing team. Today's session will be around the production cycle and the application of this cemental carbide. That is a material that is um, a basis of our daily business. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will find very interesting know how we can get from powder to the finishing product uh, and to understand the different characteristics of uh, the substrate that define the application range of uh, the cemented carbide. Well, of course, during the presentation, you will have the possibility to ask questions. And today our presenter will be Vladimir Zhirevstov, uh, who is one of our uh, metal cutting experts uh, based in, uh, in Europe. And it will guide us during the journey uh, of the production cycle of the cemented carbide. Uh, Vladimir has many years of experience uh, in the industry and uh, a very good uh, knowledge about carbide uh, and coatings. Also, this session will be recorded and uh, it will be also available for future reference. Uh, you will receive a link uh, where you can find the recording afterwards uh, in, uh, in, um, by email. As a last note, but not less important, I will also take the, the um, one moment to talk about safety, as this is a core value for video. Just make sure you are in a very comfortable environment, uh, you know your surrounding, uh, and uh, you also know where the emergency exits are located in case they are needed. So with this being said, I wish you a very good uh, time uh, going through the presentation, and then I will hand over to Vladimir. So Vladimir, stage is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, dear metalworking colleagues. Uh, let's talk uh, during this hour about uh, how we produce uh, carbide inserts and uh, general cutting tools uh, and cutting tools in general. So basically, uh, I wanted to say that why we are talking about uh, carbide today. Uh, Basically, because it's uh, the most popular uh, cutting tool material uh, in the world. Uh, even maybe some of you are using some drills, for example, with the tip of cemented carbide in your house and when you're drilling uh, a wall to hang uh, some pictures, for example, and paintings and so on. So basically, we have different cutting tool materials, uh, super hard materials, uh, for example, PCD, polycrystalline diamond, and uh, PCBN, uh, and also very tough uh, materials like a high speed uh, steel. And uh, the only uh, carbide or cemented carbide uh, tools made of them, uh, they have much, much wider application area because some of them can have very uh, big toughness. Some of them can be very, very hard. For example, uh, cermets or coated uh, carbides, they're very, very hard. So prior, uh, I continue uh, to say to um, explain how we produce what is important in production of uh, carbide grades i wanted to ask uh, you one question if you can please in uh, some second it's to touch a little bit uh, history how it's been invented i mean carbide cemented carbide in cutting tool industry so before in the 19th century, the first, uh, the, the most popular material for cutting of or cutting material metals, for example, steel and cast iron, uh, it was a high speed steel. So basically in 1925, uh, Friedrich Krupp uh, in uh, Krupp Industries uh, company uh, bought a patent for ca carbide from the one of the producers of uh, bulbs, electric bulbs. Uh, for example, old bulbs, you know that there is a wire and it is made of uh, cemented carbide and it generates lights. So after that, Friedrich Krupp bought the patent and uh, firstly in the world, he uh, started to use it in cutting uh, tools. So basically in brace cutting tools, tips and so on and so on. And why he, he uh, did it? Because uh, in the beginning of 20th century, machine tools, for example, turning lattice and also maybe, uh, milling centers, they could um, uh, work much faster. So uh, revolutions per minute. 
they can uh, achieve much more than uh, can HSS uh, tools uh, allow to, to work because uh, HSS tools cannot work with high cutting speed and the, it, the uh, HSS uh, do, uh, doesn't have uh, big uh, enough uh, thermal resistance. So that's why we needed to go uh, forward and uh, this should be, uh, this became true, I mean, to acquire normal cutting data uh, only with new cutting materials uh, named that time video. So it was the f name of the first cemented carbide used in cutting tools. Uh, world was uh, created from two uh, words, from, from two German words via diamond because uh, it was like translated hard or like a diamond. So first cemented carbide uh, had much higher hardness than the most popular cutting tool material at that time, high-speed steel. So VDN, it was a simple, uh, at that time maybe it was complex, but now it can be said simple. Uh, first uh, cemented carbide, which contained 6% of cobalt and 94% of um, um, uh, tungsten carbide. So basically now it's uh, several days just passed. Uh, first uh, carbide, uh, now it's uh, 94 years old. It is used not only in the tools, also it, was, it uses the carbide nozzles, also in some rings, in uh, earthworks, industries and so on, also in electronics and mobile phones, because it's very good conductor. But we are producer of cutting tools and let's talk about what we, uh, how we are using this uh, tool, how we, give, how we get it. And when we were talking about structure of uh, carbide, uh, we should imagine that uh, the size of particle of carbide, of uh, radiocarbide, uh, can be measured in microns. And micron is 100 thinner uh, or smaller than uh, the thickness of human hair. So basically, cemented carbide, it's a sintered mix of uh, carbides. It can be different, but one of the most popular is uh, tungsten carbide, or in some countries and some languages, the most common word is Wolfram carbide. That's why we have this element named W. Uh, and cobalt, that's why we call it cemented carbide, because carbides, uh, if you, we, we unite the, uh, them, if we sinter them in, in the furnace, but without any binder, uh, either it will not be a solid, so it will be still a mix. Uh, so we need uh, some metal which uh, cement carbides altogether. So uh, elements can be different also. Molybdenum can be used like a binder. Uh, titanium carbide can be used as a, as a cutting uh, carbide and so on. But most common, it's a Wolfram carbide. Also, why this element? This element, because it has very high thermal, uh, resistance and uh, also melting point is very high and a very uh, big density so it's very heavy and also it has very good hardness but with carbide i mean wolfram carbide has very high hardness basically and cobalt we can we could use another binder but the binder should have a good affinity to the wolfram carbide in order to stick it together all particles being in a solid tool and also it should has uh, have also high uh, melting points so high uh, temperature resistance also so basically it's uh, the best combination in cutting tools so far wolfram carbide and cobalt the macro structure looking like it showed here on this uh, slide uh, Greek uh, color is uh, particles of um, uh, tungsten carbide and cobalt is a uh, binder. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it has a white color. Uh, also, there can be some additions. Uh, they can have another colors uh, and basically uh, tungsten carbide called alpha phase, uh, cobalt beta phase and some additions can can be called gamma phase, but we can uh, touch it uh, a little bit later. Basically, uh, in order to produce anything from uh, powder, we need prepared powder from somewhere uh, or 
to take it from somewhere or to prepare by ourselves. And also we need to uh, make uh, this uh, shaped, cooked, I mean, uh, sintered, and also ground to, to uh, have enough, good enough accuracy of the cutting edges, of the base surfaces and so on. And at first we need to take uh, tungsten from somewhere. So basically it's been taken from the earth, from the different parts, from the different countries. And uh, I have a next question to you, just uh, to understand your, uh, to see your assumption. How, what do you think? What is the main countries uh, where um, tungsten ore is being uh, mined? So where does the main mines are, uh, are situated? Because basically tungsten, it's not so easy to take. We need to cut the earth. So and to, to take a complex and uh, compound, uh, it's like an acid with uh, oxides and so on and so on. And then we need to purify it to get uh, pure tungsten. The main, the main mines in the world are situated in China. So uh, more than 70%. The second place uh, until recent times uh, was uh, in it, uh, Russia and Canada. But uh, recently, but recently, about, I don't know, about eight years ago and so on, according to statistics, we see that Vietnam exporting a lot of uh, carbide, a lot of tungsten uh, ore uh, to the market. So Vietnam now has the second place. Uh, third is uh, Russia and uh, Canada. The first is for sure China. So, but it's just ore, it's not a carbide, it's not a good powder. Yes, they export it too, but uh, basically producers, big producers of tools, they are taking this uh, ore and start to melt it. For example, uh, the most famous uh, uh, ore or compounds is like wolframite and shellite. We need to, to break it, grind it uh, and start to purify from uh, things we don't need. For example, we need to uh, to decompose it, reduction uh, to to have a reduction to get pure tungsten, not without any oxides. Uh, and uh, after that, we get pure tungsten. We also cannot use these tungsten in cutting tools. We use carbides. So after that, in special furnaces, we have a carburization uh, process. In high temperatures, uh, carbon is being uh, added to this to, to Wolfram to tanks and special uh, sp special ovens. So we have one hour. Yes, we can talk about it more deeply. So in in details, how it's been uh, made, what type of furnaces, what type of dryings, uh, meltings, and so on, how it's been done. But we have only one hour, even less. So basically, I I, I wanted to show to you some basic things and uh, to have time also to on applications. So, in the end of this process, we are getting uh, tungsten carbide, WC. So, this is a ready carbide, but not ready to be pressed, because it should be united with cobalt somehow. And to unite it with cobalt, uh, we need to mix cobalt with uh, tungsten carbide, and also with some, with some other additions. For example, uh, chromium carbide and also with wax or, or with polyethylene glycolum. It's uh, uh, the, uh, the last element is needed uh, to uh, stick together all things after pressing in order to, to, to have a unified shape of insert. So we mix it all together in spirit or in special water with spirit. And there are different technologies. Uh, they are put in the drum and uh, they started to be rotated with uh, carbide rods inside, like it showed here, or carbide balls inside, or also carbide small shafts inside, which helps to be uh, to melt and to mix uh, the, uh, all ingredients. After that, we have very mixed and also a little bit milled. I mean, all the insides could be decreased, but it's liquid. So liquid we cannot press. Uh, after in order to 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 make pressing, we need to dry it. So usually on our plants we have uh, 
uh, special equipment. It's it called spray drying machine or spray, or spray drying equipment. So in the form of spray through nozzles, uh, carbide mix, carbide liquid, uh, is being delivered to this very big uh, cylinder with conical part uh, below. Its uh, height of this uh, equipment is about, I don't know, maybe 50, 30, uh, from 10 to 50 meters. So it depends on how mass production, how big is production of uh, powder on this plant. Uh, and also uh, heat, very hot uh, air is being delivered also to the same uh, cavity and do very, very high, with very high temperature. Because of this high temperature, uh, liquid and uh, at, uh, a lot of uh, such uh, technologies, liquid is a spirit, so it uh, evaporates much faster. And uh, after that, we get a dried mix uh, uh, and this mix in form of granules. So granules uh, is been filtered after that, the unified sizes, they have been put into special cans uh, and been stored in the stock in the warehouse or it's been put or have been put to uh, press, uh, pressing equipment. So basically this mix of uh, tungsten carbide, titanium carbide if it's needed, tantalum carbide, niobium and cobalt and wax, uh, they all together uh, mix is called a RTP, ready to press powder. So we, to, uh, we take it, uh, we take this ready to press powder and put into pressing machine. So pressing machines just a, like stamping machine and the force of stamping is about 40 tons for uh, medium or, or, and small uh, inserts and uh, 100 tons for big inserts like RCMX32, for example, or uh, some uh, LNMX30 uh, uh, turning inserts, for example. Uh, and after pressing, pressing is needed to get the base base shape and chip breaker, so chip breaker profile. Uh, but uh, when it's pressed, it also still contain wax. Also, it's a very brittle uh, product. We, we are getting after the pressing. We need to sinter it somehow. Sintering is needed to get uh, homogeneous and uh, without any porosity structure with normal hardness and normal toughness of carbide. If we talk a little bit more about pressing, it can be, uh, press tools can be different. Pressing machines also can be different, but usually they are robotized, automated. So basically uh, here on the, in the center, you can see the press tool, the press die or mold uh, with the first, with, with the basic shape of this insert. So it's like L, uh, according to ISO designation of this uh, uh, insert, and also we we can use uh, we, we you can see a punch. It's a top punch and also this similar very similar punch. It's bottom punch. If uh, insert is double sided, so two punches should be the same. One from the uh, one from the top is be, uh, will, will push the mix the the, uh, the powder and one from the bottom will push. So after the, this two pushing, if I can say so, uh, we are getting the first prototype, if I can say so, uh, of cutting insert with chip breaker and with hole. For example, here you can see it's also uh, on the uh, top punch and the bottom all the same. There is a part of uh, carbide road. So basically it uh, allows, uh, powder to not be in the center, so it allows us to get a uh, hole. And also there is an, uh, a little bit another process here. Uh, so here you can see that uh, we, we pressed insert like usual insert here, I mean, in the center. So like a CNMG, CNMM, DNMG and so on with a uh, hole in the, in the middle. But what but here you can see we yeah, have very simplified short pressing of cross hole uh, inserts like LNUX, uh, tangential clamped inserts when the hole is in other uh, direction. So basically, process has been uh, is been made like this. So in the first at first uh, press die is filling with the 
Auron. After that, uh, two punch Sabin works. One is pressing, then another is pressing. And after that, it's extracted. So roads have been taken out here and uh, ready, almost ready product. I mean, pressed insert is uh, been evacuated from this uh, machine tool by um, robotic um, hand. But it's only a uh, preliminary shape. So it's, it has porosity, it's very brittle. So if you touch it and if you push it a little bit by your finger, you will destroy it. Uh, and only uh, wax uh, is uh, uh, allowing it to be in, in this form. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't have any uh, normal properties. So to acquire, to get better properties and properties of carbide, so we need to sinter it. Sintering is being uh, made uh, in special furnaces with additional uh, pressure or without additional pressure. It's different models, so big inserts or small inserts, insert or not, or big uh, circle, for example, or drum and so on, depending on the, what, what carbide uh, to, what carbide product we are being produced. Uh, we are producing. So uh, we need to center it. So we need uh, to use high temperatures during the uh, during uh, some time. Uh, what temperatures? What time? Generally, you can see here. So batch of inserts, uh, a lot of inserts, not one. So uh, it can be from hundreds inserts to thousands inserts being put to the to this furnace. Uh, and after that, uh, there is a heating process. You can see here the first heating process and uh, the maintaining of the temperature during some hours. Uh, during this maintaining of 500 uh, Celsius temperature, uh, there is a devaxing, devaxing um, process. So basically in special gas, uh, wax is being reduced. So it's been taken out from this, uh, from uh the insert after that so because wax is not needed it, it doesn't have uh, anything good it's just a glue like a glue it will not cut or it will it don't, don't have a big uh, uh, melting point and so on so after that we uh heating even more and after this heating there is a real sintering process in the hard phase and then in the liquid phase when cobalt is start is starting to be melt. It's uh, started about about at, at 1,500 uh, Celsius uh, degrees. After here, also here we are also maintaining this temperature for some time, depending on the grade. Also during the high, uh, when we use high temperature, uh, grains are starting to be grown. So they are growing, and uh, it depends what uh, type of uh, great, we want to to get uh, sub micron, uh, middle micron, uh, middle grain size, and so on. Uh, it, so time of this maintaining of this temperature depends on that, and also cooling. Here, after that, we should cool down uh, our inserts, and according to the speed, and sometimes it's not a line. Uh, what uh, uh, depends on what also structure, what grain size, what properties we are getting, uh, we, are, we are finally getting. Uh, for example, some of grades, uh, they, they have structure, not uh, constant structure or in volume. Uh, we call it gradient, gradient substrates. Uh, it's very good optimization of properties and uh, contains of different uh, um, ingredients uh, for CVD uh, coated grades for steel and stainless steel, for example. So in coolant influence on that a lot. So basically, after sintering, we are getting uh, almost ready to cut products. So be, uh, and also volume of this product of our inserts has been decreased by about thirty percent. And also, there is no any porosity here, no any pores, uh, empty spaces inside. Uh, so we can use it, but uh, in order to, to get the best results, we need to get uh, maximum accuracy 
we need to get more or less precise uh, product. For that, we need to grind base surfaces and also some other surfaces, depending on the product also. For example, all inserts, uh, milling, turning inserts also for steel, for aluminum, for air, they have this operation top and bottom grinding. So grinding wheel, grinding machine, uh, uh, is machining uh, the base surfaces which uh, on, on which inserts will be lie on in um, turning uh, holder and in milling body um, pocket so all inserts have this operation also uh, to to be clamped more precisely in milling cutters for example a lot of milling cutter inserts uh, have this operation named periphery grinding so additional periphery, uh, grinding of periphery or on different inserts. For example, our inserts for uh, milling cutter HNGJ or HNPJ, this inserts for our milling cutter M1200. It's an economical uh, face, uh, face milling cutter. Uh, they can be two types. So for so uh, HNGJ, these inserts are ground. And also according to ISO designation, you can see G means the smaller allowances, uh, more precise uh, tolerance of uh, of insert in general. So also on, on all sizes, on uh, inside circle and thickness, for example. And also we have a little bit more economical ones, but they are for semi finishing mainly uh, designed. It's uh, these inserts are without um, additional grinding of periphery. They are also precise enough for many applications. Uh, but when we uh, machine titanium or stainless steel or need to get maximum results, we are using ground milling inserts. Why also it's important? Because it influence on run out, because milling cutter is multi tool tool. So we need to decrease run out and we have a grind, a periphery grinding operations. One more operation uh, all inserts have, it's a edge rounding. Uh, it that it it matter it influence uh, on uh, which uh, cutting edge we need to get. But uh, in general, uh, all inserts after sintering after sintering they are slightly sharp or their edge is not so even. This one is more sharp, my uh, one is more strong, or not so sharp. So uh, properties uh, are not can be not so stable uh, because uh, carbide is like a hard material i mean cemented carbide uh, and we, we need to stabilize somehow uh, the properties so every insert uh, is been put to special edge round machine and it's uh, just it's like a brushing machine so so brush uh, from this machine is uh, taking some material and make this uh, edge uh, very very even and, and have uni uh, the same radius on all edges on all batch on whole batch of these uh, inserts. So according to standards, different inserts have different round roundness. For example, for semi finishing, CNMG12 have about 40 micrometers uh, edge rounding. Uh, super finishers have smaller uh, 20 micrometers. Uh, for heavy duty, 50, 55 uh, micrometers edge round rounding, and so on. And also, we not forgetting to uh, check what we are doing. So basically, in different stages uh, of uh, production, we take some, some samples and uh, analyze them. For example, after sintering, we take uh, samples for metallographical control. So basically, this uh, in this control, we are cutting our inserts. Uh, and uh, also with big magnifications, uh, we are watching on uh, structure, on magnification 2000 times uh, on the structure. If there are any porosity, if the structure is uh, even uh, homogeneous and so on. Uh, also, there are some untouchable controls. So in special equipment, we put inserts and look at some magnetic uh, values and understand uh, if uh, everything is all right, if according to the specifications or not. If not, we cut and uh, look what has happened and uh, if it's needed we need to we are making a reworking on to produ production of next batch 
uh, also profile and radius control, which is uh, needed, uh, which is very important when we produce uh, 3D inserts, for example. Visual control, generally it's been done after whole production process has been finished. Um, uh, visual control by eyes or by robots, so uh, uh, via microscope automatically uh, our equipment controls uh, inserts. The, what mean controls? There is no any deviations in shape sizes and shape and sizes and also no any chipping on the edges, on main edges. And also sometimes needed to control hardness or also control uh, coatings, uh, adhesion and so on. So uh, when we talk about any cutting tool materials, we need to understand and we need to try uh, be able to manage. I mean, we are like a producer uh, to manage properties, uh, hardness, abrasion resistance, uh, toughness, uh, deformation resistance also, friction coefficient even it's needed when we machine aluminum, for example, depending on the material and, um, and the complex, complexity of application, we need to design uh, grade according to, to, to all challenges in the future applications. And how we can manage with that if we talk about substrate? Today we, we're talking about mainly substrate and Wednesday, not tomorrow, Wednesday we'll have next webinar about coatings. We will talk about also about applications and different types of coatings, but it will be uh, on Wednesday today about substrate, how we manage the properties of carbide uh, inside, uh, in, uh, you, uh, changing the, the structure of the carbide. At first, uh, with a different contain, um, content of uh, binder and carbides. So basically, there is a dependence. Uh, if we need to get an uh, insert with a bigger, greater toughness, uh, we need to put more cobalt or, and put less uh, Wolfram carbide. So more cobalt, more metal, more binder, uh, less carbides, very hard particles, uh, bring more uh, greater toughness to the to, to, to insert. And vice versa, if we put more uh, Wolfram carbide and less cobalt content, so for example, 5% of cobalt or six, it means it will be used mainly for finishing. It has very high wear resistance. And also because uh, the uh, thermal resistance of carbide is greater than thermal resistance of metal, of co cobalt, it has much more uh, ability to, to, to be used in, with higher cutting speeds, with higher temperatures. But if we use a small amount of uh, binder, of uh, cobalt, uh, the toughness will be not that, not that good. Uh, so it should be a combination, optimal combination uh, for, for specific application. We uh, are designing great to be, to be the best. What else we can do? So first grade in the world called VDN, it was uh, uh, Wolfram carbide plus 6% of cobalt. Uh, but after several years, uh, again, uh, industries in the world, in Europe also, um, uh, they needed higher cutting speeds uh, in, uh, to machine steel and turning machine tools and milling machine tools faster. But it high, its cutting speeds and temperatures uh, uh, there should be, um, uh, th there is another challenge which appeared uh, in, in machining, chemical reactiveness of uh, Wolfram carbide and steel, because steel, it's uh, uh, ferrum and uh, also carbon. That's why uh, th uh, there is a affinity to each other during the high, higher, at higher cutting speeds. Uh, so Wolfram carbide could not resist the chemical reaction. And uh, the wear on the rake face is been, is, was appearing much faster than uh, productions in the world needed. So we added uh, additions, uh, we used these additions, titanium, tantalum, niobium, carbides, uh, and some others to prevent that. Tantalum, for example, he, it improves a little bit toughness and also improves chemical resistance. And titanium 
doing the same, but increased tough, uh, hardness a little bit. But main uh, target was is uh, increased uh, chemical resistance uh, in machining of steel. So for steel, we introduced a grade like a VDA X, and it was multi-carbide grade. One carbide grade was used mainly for gray cast iron because temperature here there was not so high and we use this combination for cast iron and also for aluminium and for steels for stainless steels we used multi-carbide grades so it changed a little bit uh, these properties what else we can do with the structure of our insert to optimize it for application we use different sizes of grains uh, if old grades have very high si um, size for example the grain which is contained of uh, an average is about from three to, to five to six uh, micrometers the modern uh, grain size for cutting tool uh, inserts is about one two uh, micrometers and for milling for example for drilling we use submicron uh, powders and um, some micron uh, structure of uh, uh, ready product. Sub micron means around or below, a little bit below one micrometer, so sub micron. Also for some products, we are using um, grain size uh, even smaller, from 0.2 to, to 0.5, it calls ultra sub micron. For some products, it is possible to use nano grain uh, grades uh, it means below 0.2 micrometers. But uh, if we use a smaller and smaller um, structure, we need to use smaller and smaller grains of the powder. And it's very, it has a very good affinity and bad for us and good for them uh, with uh, uh, oxygen, with uh, air. So basically, we can produce uh, nanograin uh, grades. It is a, they can be very nice, very good, but it will be very um, expensive because uh, they are very um, demanding in the storage. Uh, one of the reason. So uh, why grain sizes? Because if we decrease grain sizes, we increase hardness too. So basically, we can make and we making for some products a very good combination of when we increase a percentage of cobalt, for example, to 10% or 12%, and decrease grain size. And uh, this is a, a way to get a ideal properties of uh, uh, substrate. Basically, because cobalt uh, bring more uh, better toughness, and uh, grain size bring. Uh, better hardness, wear resistance, and also we can get sharper edge and more reliable edge on inserts. What else? Uh, then Wednesday we will talk about coatings, and this is the next step. This, this was a revolution. In uh, 1962, we uh, got a patent on uh, coated carbide inserts. And uh, why coating? Because coating has much higher hardness, minimum 1,700 stickers. And uh, for example, um, aluminum oxide has similar hardness like here, while uh, cemental carbide hardness is uh, around 1,500. There are uh, different types. There are also harder uncoated grades, yes, but they are very brittle. Uh, but coated uh, coating make us make possible to get to produce softer, tougher substrate and put very hard coating on it. So it's tough and hard and very resistant at the same time. So application area became much, much wider and cutting uh, conditions too. Also, uh, coatings uh, brought more uh, bigger resistance to cutting temperatures. And even uncoated cemented carbide has cutting temperatures. I mean, it's not degrade very fast. Uh, until 1,300 uh, degrees Celsius. While, for example, the most uh, popular until the beginning of the 20th century high-speed steel, it has also uh, tungsten inside, uh, but uh, the cutting maximum cutting temperature was not uh, higher than 550 degrees Celsius. 
So when we come to the application, application can be different, drilling, uh, milling, uh, turning, uh, rimming, and so on. Uh, also, uh, not only on application, but also at first uh, on uh, workpiece material. According to ISO 513, it can be steel, so group of different steels, low carbon, middle carbon, alloy, uh, and so on. Stainless steels, M, uh, cast iron, non-ferrous material, uh, super alloys, heat resistant super alloys, and hardened steels. Uh, depend uh, why uh, we design substrate and in generally uh, whole grade, uh, depending on this group because it's uh, because it's not. Uh, th th there was a reason why uh, it was uh, divided. I mean, all, uh, all materials was divided to these groups. Uh, one of the reasons was machinability. So inside the same group of materials, machinability is more or less the same. Or and the chip uh, formation on chip uh, form is more or less the same, and load on cutting edge more or less the same, uh, and temperatures uh, and cutting data a little bit. So th th I understand that there is a range and it's slightly big, but in general, it's more or less the same uh, load on if we if we compare steels in group p with stainless steels in uh, several stainless steels in group m austenitic uh, uh, and others so uh, basically our grade should be uh, directed to to particular um, work with materials also there are some universal but it's another story grades and uh, hardness in general so inside the each group we need to have uh, grades for finishing for stable conditions for uh Conditions P01, P10, for example, it mean without any interrupted cut, cutting without any cheats on the cutting edge. And the P30, P40, so we need to also have grade which uh, resist to interrupted cut with heavy heats, uh, much, much better. So with more, more cobalt inside, thin coating, for example, and so on. So there are different factors uh, which uh, uh, we need to take it into account here. And basically, if we talk about uncoated grades, yes, it was in the past. Now the main material is coated grade. Uh, if to, to, to just to look in the, to, the, to, to the past, uh, we can uh, talk uh, that uh, for steel, for example, we, are, we were used to multi carbide grades for cast iron. Uh, one carbide grade, uh, the Wolfram carbide plus cobalt, and also for stainless steel, uh, multi carbide grades too. Uh, for turning, for milling, for tapping, also we are taking this into consideration what speed we need to use, what temperature uh, will be uh, generated during the machining, and so on. So, uh, basically, this is a uh, general information how we produce uh, uh, inserts basically carbide uh, cemented carbide yes i didn't mention co I, I just i just mentioned coating uh, about how we produce coating in which equipment uh, which types of coating uh, we have in our portfolio and how we uh, implement them what, what the benefits of different layers we will talk on wednesday so basically after grinding of uh, we have a coating operation after coating uh, we have also um, some brushing operation for some inserts. For uh, we're also polishing uh, the cutting edges after af after coating to make the uh, friction even lower. And also after that, there are the usual steps like marking, inspection. Yeah, I mentioned it, but just one more time to say this. Not bad. Uh, marking. Uh, packing and uh, storage or sending to the customer. Basically, from my side, this is all for today. So I want to see you also to next webinar. And if you have any questions, please uh, ask. Let's read uh, your questions and uh, I would love to answer them. Thank you, Vladimir. Um... So at the moment, we have one, one first question for you. Um, so the first question is, how true coolant holes are made in solid carbide drills? 
uh, also during production process there is another uh, way of pressing of uh, rods for example carbide rods it's uh, uh, called injection mold uh, also for some types of roads, carbide roads, there is a diet pressed, but it's a little bit another story. So uh, basically there is, in the road, there is a special material uh, here and it's evaporated after the sintering. So basically it's disappeared after the high temperature and uh, we are getting this uh, spiral or uh, direct uh, holes on the, uh, on the future drill, for example. Okay, so are you? I'm sorry. I mean, before grinding, I mean, it's been done during the sintering of the cemented carbide rods during the injection molding process. Okay, uh, very well. We have another question. Um, what is the importance of binder? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, if you have enough to answer, Vladimir. Uh, the first uh, purpose of the binder is uh, to stick together all uh, carbide particles. Uh, how to do it? How to uh, to make uh, the, the best connection between them and the, the good strengths of the of the grade, uh, carbide grade? Uh, uh, it uh, binder should have. Uh, a property, uh, the, the good future adhesion to the uh, Wolfram carbide uh, due to the sintering. During the sintering, there is a, some sort of chemical reaction between all, in all ingredients. For example, uh, carbon, uh, uh, Wolfram carbide is dissolving a little bit in cobalt. Cobalt a little bit dissolving in the Wolfram carbide. Also, some additions also influence on that. And this connection, this uh, dissolution, this uh, compound, it uh, should have uh, the, the best reliability and strength in general. And the uh, second, it should be, it should have also high uh, melting uh, point. I mean, uh, it should not melt until 1,500 degrees. So if we took another, um, another binder, I mean, with a smaller melting point, yeah, our grade will not will not uh, work uh, on higher cutting speeds. It will uh, be heated and it will be degraded. Uh, whole composition will be degraded, will be destroyed much 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 faster. So binder can be different also. Molybdenum, uh, for example, why for cermets the best? Not only, but one of the best binder for cermets means without Wolfram carbide, uh, there is a with titanium carbide uh, composition. Molybdenum is the best because uh, chemical reaction is the best with molybdenum during the sintering, not with the cobalt. But there are some technologies now to have some special ad additions and also it's allowed to produce cermets with cobalt too. So at least these two, what I can say. Yeah, very good, Vladimir. So, in fact, another question was, are there new binder available other than as a main binder? Probably you started to answer this question about the cermet, but are you aware about any other main binder that can be applied on, on a carbide substrate? Oh, frankly speaking, no. Uh, I mean, it, it, it may be, but I'm not a developer of uh, carbide, so if I would allow to answer, if I would be a developer, uh, I could answer. But basically about Cermets, I answered uh, about developing a binder for Cermets. So some uh, Cermets uh, switched to molybdenum, to cobalt with some additions, so more hybrid uh, binder. Uh, more ideal binder, for example, we also using on some grades. Some grades, uh, after you can listen seminars of our uh, sales engineers, and uh, we introduce some WP40, WS40. It has some interesting uh, binder, more heat resistant one. Uh, what we added to there, it's not that uh, it's not that uh, important. I mean, uh, generally. Uh, anyway, we uh, it's very good to know how to produce uh, cemented carbide and how to use. It. But much more important f for us how to use it, even as, if it's um, uh, made of plastic. It doesn't if this plastic is working very very good. Uh, so it, it's good cutting tool material. 
but we are professionals so we our distributors our salesmen we need to explain to understand uh, how it's been produced and in some cases it it helped to to apply it better yes and to, but about binder yes we have some more complex binder to make it even more hit resistance we have such uh, developments <clears throat> Very good. So then we have uh, a couple of questions about recycling of uh, carbide. Uh, so they are asking um, about um, if the um, the grain size is controlled rating of cobalt and other coating binder and tank uh, can be separated during recycling. Mm, you a little bit was uh, interrupted I mean, because of connection. If I understood you, how to separate ingredients uh, during the recycling? Yeah, I think the question is about you know when when we get back the inserts from customer and we are going to 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 uh, regenerate the powder. So how the different components can be separated during the recycling process? Basically, in the volume of the carbide. Uh, volume of coating and vo volume of additions uh, is very, very, very small. So basically, I don't know, it's may maybe less than, than 1%. And uh, the main volume is uh, uh, tungsten carbide and cobalt. So basically, usually, I cannot, I didn't hear that they are, they are separated. As, as, uh, Usually there there are different types of recycling, the zinc method and also some sort of another's, and also uh, recycled. I mean, the broken ground milled uh, powder after you uh, of used uh, inserts is being added to inserts, for example, but very 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 small uh, amount. So basically, it's not influenced so much and. I mean, tantalum or wolfram, if it's separated or not, uh, I think no, it's, it's, it, it, it is not separated. And the coating is very, very thin, so it's not influenced on that. The most important is not to mix uh, cermet, if you don't know the composition of cermet, with the carbide powder, because cermet has uh, molybdenum uh, and uh, also some other ad additions. And, uh, but binder is, it's a significant amount. Yes, not not not, not big, but significant, and uh, it will destroy whole uh, whole powder after mixing with cobalt with molybdenum. It will not work together. So basically, with one of the rule, if you if you collect uh, inserts, uh, collect cermets in another can, uh, and uh, some cermets uh, based on uh, cobalt binder. It's, that's good. If which has molybdenum, they should be recycled in another. In another process, in another batch. So I'm sorry, cannot answer so detailed how we are recycling. So I need to to ask more detailed information from our plant specialists. Okay, so we still have uh, one minute, so we take uh, one last question. Um, so why PCD is not used for machine steel? Uh, usually, it would be good to use it on steel, but diamond uh, PCD, a diamond is a, it's a carbon, so it's a, one, one sort of uh, carbon. And uh, during the machining of steel, steel also contain carbon uh, contains, and with higher uh, temperatures and uh, speeds, uh, it will lead to to chemical reaction. That's why it's it's not not possible at all to to use it there. Unfortunately, because it's the hardest, hardest than video, even the uh, hardest uh, material in the world. And also diamond coatings. Okay, good. Very good, Vladimir. So we reached the end of uh, our uh, presentation. So I remember you that we, uh, you will receive a link. Uh, uh, receive a link uh, for a survey i also can see that one uh, my colleague from the plant is answering that uh, at least there is a separation of different products i mean if we have mining products 
I mean, some mining roads, for example, or uh, inserts, so we are separate them. So we are recycling them separately anyway, because they have completely different grain size and maybe different additions. Where parts also, we are scrapping them and the recycling separately. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Vladimir. Okay. Thank you very much, Vladimir. So, um, again, thank you very much for attending today's session and thank you, Vladimir, for uh, taking the opportunity to go through the presentation today. Uh, and uh, again, thank you and I wish you a very good day.